right, friends, we are on to part two. And now I'm taking what I can see in the background from the pattern that is happening. Um, and I'm making those flowers. And some are really visible and some I kind of have to search for. But that's what that's, that's why that's there. And it continues to add depth to the background as well. Even if I'm not pulling out a flower, that pattern really helps. And so I do use a little bit of white up at the top to kind of pull the flower field away from the background and to give it a little bit more contrast. But I will use my soft pastel pencils and my charcoal pencils to kind of find my design. And I will use them also for middles and adding um, additional detail. Adding my stems. And still not really sure where this is going to go yet. So you just have to take the next step. The stems were the next step. The separation of the sky and the grass, the next step. And then I just continue to search for more pattern in the, this field of flowers, eventually, um, that look like flowers. And I'm using all of my colors of magenta, cad yellow, cad orange, uh, cerulean blue, and prism violet. And then I'm coming back in with colors into the center. And I, I vary them. I want these to be really playful. I'm not trying to get a realistic look. I want it to be fun. And this was a relaxing process because there was no perfection involved, just playtime. And I come back in with either a different color or white to add some depth to the, the petals to give it some interest. This is my Little Flowers stencil, Little Flowers status stencil, adding a pop of white. Always need that white. You need that contrast of lights and darks, whether it's a light yellow or a dark yellow. Um, that contrast really makes things feel balanced and interesting. So you can see I made some yellows lighter and some of my orange lighter. Anytime you can do some value change in your colors, it always makes things more interesting. And these are quick brush strokes. These are nothing special, just real quick strokes. Um, with my paint, whatever color I'm feeling at the moment. And again, bringing back in some of that white to add that pop of contrast. Now I'm going to go to my bigger flowers now with my flowy flower stencil. And I put a base layer of gesso down first because I really wanted these flowers to stand out. And so I didn't want them to get lost in the backgrounds. So that's why I put the white down first. And I'm doing the same technique that I did in the first video where I'm, I demonstrate this stencil and how I will be using it. And using my darker colors at the, at the bottom, lighter color at the top, using those brush strokes to really bring that stencil shape into a floral look. and making sure to add a different value of color on top to give it that depth. Putting down some more or some butterflies. Put down a whole lot more in a little bit, but um, birds and butterflies, you can never have enough, especially for spring. Adding these small little tiny flowers at the top that are just kind of sticking out 
that you would, might see in a field of flowers. But super simple, just my finger with some paint and just a scribble of a pencil. And now I'm kind of thinking about bringing some of this design on over into the next section. And so my start with that is just these simple flowers. And same with the trees. So contrast in the tree leaves really helps. So you can see that bright pop of green really brings the eye up and around and a tension up there and makes it feel alive. So I've got my General's Charcoal Pencil and I'm going to do just kind of some random shading, mainly on the underside of the branches. I'll add a few extra little bits of branches here and there, but I'm not doing a ton of shading just because of the nature of the branches themselves and, and they look really good the way that they are. But I wanted a little bit of depth, especially on the trunk. And then I'll shade around my birds and my butterflies. I add some special little dots on them and part of that is to bring some focus to those areas because the bird can get lost in the trees, the blue butterfly could get lost in the blue background. Those little dots help move the eye around this section and it gives it interest and it's a playful feel too. Adding some soft pastels now to my florals and my charcoal pencil shading and using that to do, just kind of define the floor, flower just a little bit. Look at that orange flower and at those easy steps that we did. And again, adding some dots into my flowers as well. Adding some just small marks for stems with a charcoal pencil, a green charcoal, green pastel pencil, dark green pastel pencil. And then I'll use some so, so, um, soft pastel sticks to add a, a few highlights to my flowers. Just adding little touches here and there with all of my same, you know, my dots with my Posca pen, charcoal pencil, and then soft pastel pencil or stick. And by taking the time to shade the, the bigger flowers, they really stand out more so than the others. Now I'm using my Flowy Leaves stencil and I'm starting light and then I will go darker. And yes, I'm going to come up over some of my flowers that I just did because we want to integrate everything together. But I'm using these as the, the leaves for those flowers. And now I'm coming back in and I used sap green for this dark green that I'm using for the leaves and the grasses. It's sap green. And I'm just, again, all of my, all the things that I'm doing are simple simple brush strokes. Same with the grasses. And then again I bring in the value change. I go to an olive green and then I go to a, a green gold with white. I, I change the value so that there's interest and depth and dimension to what we're looking at doesn't look flat, it looks interesting. And 
And of course, we're going to add more butterflies because it's always good. It's always a good idea. And this section is the world is beginning to change. And then on the other part, and this is all words from Mary Oliver's poem, it's leaves unfolding. I'll add a little bit of shading to my words, add a little bit more shading to my butterflies that I just put down. few more dots and delightful things on my butterflies. I'm going to shade the edges of this section because that lets me know that I'm finished or I'm close to being finished. It helps me see. It kind of encompasses everything and I can see if things feel balanced. So that is our first section complete. Now let's move on to the next section. I'm using a brown soft pastel, kind of following some of the line of the stencil work that we have done until I get over to this part because that's a, another section that we're going to be working on. So I've got some raw umber now and I'm creating my mountains. And you can see how I brought part of that over into the other section to kind of bring it together and kind of translate that story into the next story. And I'm just using a little bit of uh, sap green and olive green mixed in with my raw umber to give me kind of the greenish hills right now. That's kind of my base layer, real, real dark. And then again, value change. I bring in some green gold with, then I bring in green gold with some uh, gesso in it and a little bit of olive green in there. Super simple brush strokes, just light touches with a half inch flat brush. Cerulean blue, same colors as my flowers that I've been using throughout, and creating my water. And I'm bringing some teal in here. And again, this is the same process as the mountain value change, adding lights and darks to create interest. And that tan, it's unbleached titanium, kind of represented some, some bit of a beach or area like that. Adding a touch of white in there and it felt too much like the ocean and so I needed to kind of tone that down just a little bit and smooth it out just a tiny bit. And now we're back to making flowers, which is my favorite thing to do. And I'm going to be doing basically the same thing that I've done with my brush, just tiny marks, making sure that I change the value, change color so that we've got some interest in there.
and I've extended this now all the way to the edge of our concertina so that I can really integrate these two sections together. Using a bit of Posca pen here for some tiny little flowers. I wanted the flowers in this section to feel a little bit different than the other section just to um, differentiate the, the two sections. Using my Posca pen for flowers, tiny little flowers blooming on the mountain. I did use my brush to bring in some magenta because I couldn't find the right color in my Posca pen. <laughs> I'm particular about my magenta. And some white again. Contrast. As soon as I get that white in there, them, those mountains come alive. And now that this is dry, I'm going to come back now with my grasses. I took that one flower out that I had painted in earlier because I went over it with the blue. So I brought some grasses over to kind of bring those two sections together again. And then I'm going to come back in and create my grasses the same way. Same simple brush strokes, same color choices, same value changes. Okay, so now I have taken um, one of my stamped um, budding tree uh, on tissue paper. One, because I, I did a couple, and I have. And if you haven't seen me do that, I did that in the first video, and I just cut it up into the parts that I wanted. And now I'm putting it down with fluid matte medium. Putting down a few more butterflies, which makes me smile.
Now I'm going to paint the tree using raw umber in the same way that I did the first tree in our first section. Just really kind of giving it a little bit of weight, adding a few branches here and there. And as I do that, I roll the brush in my fingers so that it feels like a tree branch and not perfectly straight. Just adding my leaves like I have done before with all the value changes, simple brush strokes. Putting that pop of soft pastel in the tree branch or in the leaves, which really brings it alive. That's that contrast, that value. All right, my loves, that is it for today's video. We will finish this concertina tomorrow.